nation's largest collections of Olympic art and memorabilia is right here on the Gulf Coast. The United States Sports Academy in Daphne has Olympic archives dating back more than 100 years. Local 15's Katie Herrera live from the U.S. Sports Academy with a look at some of these treasures that, Katie, we can see whether the Olympics are going on or whether they're dormant for four years. It's all right there. It's all right here and it's all absolutely free and that's one thing we will get to throughout the show this morning. But first, we're going to take you down Olympic History Lane. They have 2,000 pieces of Olympic artwork, memorabilia, and just inspiration on display here at the United States Sports Academy. And I have the president, Dr. TJ Rosandich, here with me this morning. Did I get it right? Yep, absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> I know, that's a work of art in <laughs> itself. But as we kind of walk into our first room back mm -hmm. here, you were telling me earlier that the Olympics are about more than just athletics. It's really about spreading cultures and mm -hmm. celebrating them as well. Yes, absolutely. The uh, Olympic movement embodies more than just the uh, sport performance. And the whole idea of the complete man, which embodies culture and uh, uh, music, literature, and what have you, has always been a part of the Olympic uh, movement. And in fact, most people are not aware of this, but from the 1908 Olympics that took place in London, all the way through to the 1948 Olympics that also took place in London, the IOC, International Olympic Committee, also awarded medals for literature, poetry, graphic art, sculpture. In other words, uh, the culture that transcends the physical culture of sport competition. That is so wonderful. I never knew they gave out medals for artwork as well. Mm -hmm. And we've got everything from beautiful paintings on the walls to sculptures that you see down here in front of us. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can show that as well. Well, the theme on that one is Olympism. But uh, Leroy Neiman, uh, whose pieces hang on the wall in here, is probably among the most famous of uh, the sport artists in the world. You know, he's recently gone to his reward, um, but when people think of sport art, they often think of him. The pieces on this wall were uh, washes that he did uh, in conjunction with the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. And uh, so you can see the uh, Soviet Union, which no longer exists, the boxing team running there and the weightlifters, uh, Olga Corbett, that's a name I'm sure that you remember from gymnastics. But uh, these prints here, uh, that was the fencing competition from Munich, pole vaulting, which is obviously athletics, boxing, and of course, uh, we have a representation of the winter uh, games. And we are going to get to that and so much more throughout the show. I know we've got tons of stuff to show off this morning, so we are so excited here at the United States Sports Academy. We're going to show you more throughout the morning. Reporting live in Daphne, I'm Katie Herrera, Local 15 News. The Academy is home to the American Sport Art Museum and Archives, which houses almost 2,000 pieces of Olympic memorabilia right here on the Gulf Coast. Local 15's Katie Herrera live from the U.S. Sports Academy in Daphne with another look into Olympic history. Katie, over the years we have visited and watched this collection grow and it's something to see. It really is fascinating. Good morning, Darwin and Kelly. Just to see how much artwork really is infused into the Olympics. You know, I think of the big spectacle of the opening ceremonies, but there is so much more that goes into the artwork that ties into the Olympics. And you say it all starts with the bidding process, and that's what we have on display right here. Right, absolutely. The pieces that are here on the wall in our main gallery were created by a Croatian artist who currently resides in Australia by the name of Charles Billich. He was our sport artist of the year 2000. But while the Beijing bid committee was trying to secure the games, they wanted to demonstrate that they could deal not only with the conduct of the games, but the cultural component as well. So Charles Billich seized upon the terracotta warriors from the first century BC in Sion, which is one of the true iconic uh, symbols of ancient China and uh, rendered them into Olympic poses, uh, which is sort of unusual. And it's fascinating see to see rings. this entire set that you all have on display. Mm -hmm. But that's the beginning of it. Okay. During the games themselves, then the Olympic uh, organizing committee would develop posters such as these uh, uh, for the games. 
And this is believed to be the only complete set of posters from the Beijing Organizing Committee in the United States. Um, and uh, the reason I know that is we had some visitors from the U.S. Olympic Committee stop by and said, wow, we don't even have these in Colorado Springs. <laughs> wow, that is truly neat. <laughs> so but much after to the see games are concluded, typically then uh, people would immortalize the competition mm -hmm. in some way. And this is a good example of that. This is one of the only pieces or times where you will see the signature Muhammad Ali, a.k.a. Cassius Clay, where he had signed both of his names. And this was right after the 1960 Rome Olympics, the boxing competition, the bracket is there, where he had won the light heavyweight competition. All right. Well, we are learning so much here at the United States Sports Academy this morning, and I can't wait to show you guys even more during the next hour. Reporting live from Daphne, I'm Katie Herrera, Local 15 News. All right, Katie, thank you so much. Well, to get another look inside at the Olympics over the years, courtesy of the U.S. Sports Academy. The Academy, you may have not known this, is home to the American Sport Art Museum and Archives, which houses almost 2,000 pieces of Olympic memorabilia. Local 15's Katie Herrera is live from the U.S. Sports Academy in Daphne with another look into Olympic history and the form of art. And Katie, you can be there all day and not see it all. That is right, Darwin. Good morning to you and Kelly. We could spend all day here just learning so many little sports nuggets from the artwork to the archives as well. And so this morning, we have now moved into the archive room. I've got Dr. Rosandich here with us again. So tell us why you brought us here. Well, as you know, we've been in the American Sport Art Museum and Archive. We've seen the Sport Art Museum, and now we're in the archive. And what we have in the Olympic collection here are all kinds of memorabilia, ranging from medals from the uh, sport associations, uh, commemorative plates and plaques from various countries with whom we've worked on the Olympics, um, medals and replica medals and uh, torches, in this case from uh, the 1988 Seoul Olympics. But uh, of real interest is some of the archival documents we have, such as represented on this shelf. Uh, we have documents going all the way back to the founding of the current Olympic Games in 1896. And so there's a uh, games report, uh, as you can see, from uh, 1896, the very first Olympics. And the dates, by the way, 776 B.C. to 1896. This is a report from the 1924 Olympic Games in Paris. But the interesting thing about this one is that it's signed by Baron Pierre de Coubertin, who was the founder of the modern Olympic Games. But anyway, uh, we have post reports covering virtually all of the games of the modern era and things such as newspapers uh, from the 36 games and what have you. But we would like to invite you to come on out and see this for yourself. Uh, the museum is open from 9 to 4, Monday to Friday. And guess what? It's free of charge. All right, there you go. Well, come down here and you will be ready for any kind of trivia night that you could attend. <laughs> Reporting live in Daphne, I'm Katie Herrera, Local 15 News. Katie, I'm wondering, did you see anything you like to put on your wall at home? I know, I wish I could grab that gold medal right out of yeah. the case and wear that. Wouldn't that be a piece of bling to have? Katie, I have a question for you. Have they seen an uptick uh, since the games have been uh, really going strong now that we're in our second week of the Olympics? Dr. Rosandich is wondering if you have seen more folks coming to visit since the Olympics have been started. Well, we have seen a slight uptick, mm -hmm. but it's really sort of amazing that, you know, the number of folks, because there's a sign on I-10, they come from all over the country. What's this? Right. So they uh, stop by and walk on in, and uh, we're always happy to have them. Okay, it's fascinating. They're a university for sporting coaches and administrators. They're a museum, an art museum, and an archive as well. So a lot going on right here in Daphne in our own backyard. Thank you, Katie. We appreciate that. We do have a quick break, but we're back with more headlines and your weather next. <laughs> 